Art Space, Sholo TV's window on the art scene in the White Mountains of Arizona and beyond. I'm Steve Taylor and this is my co-host Ann Moore. Ann, how are you doing? I'm good, Steve. How are you? I'm fine. Well, it's great to be here with Lori Dykes today and find out about all the work that she does. And Well, it's not work. <laughs> is it? Yes, it is <laughs> well, work. Some of, some of, of it's work? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we still have fun with our art though, don't we? Yes. Well, what first got you started with art, Laurie? Well, when I was a kid, I grew up 15 minutes west of New York City, so my parents wow. took me to New York and we went to galleries and museums and all that, so they always encouraged my art and then um, I just took art through school and high school and then some college and even some adult classes uh -huh. and just kept going and then I got married and put my art aside for a while and came back to it so mm -hmm. yep. yep we all do that yeah mm -hmm. I was gonna say been there done that yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah life takes over sometimes and right. we have to set the uh, things aside that we would like to do but uh, well good now, I noticed you do a variety of things. I and, am a uh, multitasker. <laughs> a multitasker, okay. My favorite is to do mural paintings. And ah. uh, I've done at the Silver Creek Flowers and Gifts and Snowflake. And then I did a big metal container east of Snowflake. That took 17 eight hour days to oh, do. Oh boy. First time on metal, first time on a surface like that. And then this recently, I did a, a little store in Snowflake called Rock and Emery Ranch. It's an interior mural, and uh, they really like it. It's more of a country um, style, and I think they have pictures of it. How did you get started doing murals, though? <sighs> That's a good question. <laughs> I don't know. I just started branching out. I, I experimented with all kinds of arts and crafts, macrame and uh, making beads and crocheting. The crocheting I've done 25 years. Mm -hmm. A lady showed me and I just never stopped. Everybody got the one in the rug at Christmas and, <laughs> there you and go. then I expanded with other ideas. I like to recycle uh -huh. and 90 percent of this stuff is made from recycled material. Oh. You mm -hmm. can imagine the landfill is probably filled with a lot of You work material. a lot with denim. Denim and t-shirts. Any, actually any, any material mm -hmm. can work pretty much. And then I expanded mm -hmm. on experimenting with different ideas with yeah. it. Sure. Well, thinking back about your murals, because, oh, sure. because you know, I've done some murals. <laughs> <laughs> you use the grid technique? I do all freehand. Oh, do you really? Okay. Except for the flower shop, the last thing at the flower shop, it looks windows on windows. It looks like French windows, but it's uh, actually me painted those. On. That took see. a week to do because I had to do it symmetrically yeah. and that took a lot of more time. Yeah. Most of the time I'll have an idea or a combination of ideas, photographs or whatever, and then I'll just freehand it out. Oh, okay. Very good. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I and you'll see, you you'll cheat. Yeah. You'll see when you see some of the examples <laughs> of what I do. And yeah. Different, I've you know, done different windows. Mm -hmm. Uh, first one up at uh, Eddie's in Country Eddie's Store. Country Store in Pine Top. That was mm -hmm. my first one up there, and they enjoyed that. So yes, that's up there. If you ever get up that way, yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, and there's one that's um, is it a Mexican food restaurant? Uh, oh yeah, El Cupido's. That's a El Snowflake. Cupido's. I do theirs at Christmas, and then if they want lettering to advertise a special or something. But like right that. now it's Cactus. Uh, no, that's a different restaurant. That's, that's a different a world restaurant. Net, that's oh. a World Net Cafe, which is oh, by the Cedar Motel. Yes. So I'm slowly You can keep out. them straight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, I, uh, my mind is still working on the, uh, on the murals idea. Sure. So uh, that's my being, able anyway. to, being able to freehand a large image like that takes quite a bit of talent and uh, did your folks realize you had a talent for art when you were young? Yeah and they yeah. encouraged me. Yeah. And just anytime I did you know, drawing, watercolors, uh -huh. I guess I first started out with paint by numbers, you know my sure. grandparents sure. would give you a, a kit at Christmas and you'd do that and then just branch out. My art teachers in school were always encouraging and kind of let give me free reign of what I wanted to do and I mean some of them you know, they give you a subject matter like a bowl of fruit or something, and you do that. And some teachers did that, but mm -hmm. then other teachers said, 
just do what you want to do, <laughs> collages or whatever. So I've experimented with all different kinds of arts and crafts too. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. but my favorite is painting. Of course, you know how long it takes to do <laughs> what you deal with the the dust and the wind and the <laughs> the weather. The, you know, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So, so you work primarily in, in the acrylic. summertime. I work, no, I work in the winter too. So Before when it's cold Christmas, out there. Oh yeah. Yes. At Christmas is when most of the people want their stuff done. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's okay. November, but at the flower shop I do with the season, so. Yeah. So what are you, you're doing the windows at the at the stores or? Uh, uh, some stores I did Eddie's and I did uh -huh. uh, the El Cupido's and I did the Silver Creek flowers. I see, so, okay. And hopefully I'll get There's, some more nibbles. Yeah, <laughs> they change with the season then. Yes. Yeah. There's a wall there over in Snowflake too, wasn't there? Um, is that also the flower shop? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that one is a more permanent one. Yes. That's yes. been there five years. Yeah. yeah. Five years. But only the windows get scraped. That's the heartbreaker. Uh, oh. The church oh, windows for Christmas took 72 hours to do those windows, and then you had to scrape it off, and that's, that's oh, the heartbreaker. That's a heartbreaker. Oh, that was scraper. That'd break your heart. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm glad we have pictures. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I've had stores change business and lose a mural that I did and, and you know oh yeah. well <laughs> oh well I just saw your one at the uh, cafe Sholo cafe that's beautiful oh it's Sholo cafe yeah, yeah that's that was fun to do and I got I got fed and nice oh, yeah <laughs> cool. and, and it was inside and you know, well, you nice know and comfortable. that room is where the arts alliance has their um their artists lunch with the artists i saw uh, that coming month. up on the and, uh, yes yeah. and and laurie is our featured artist over and there this, be mo uh, well, this month september 17th yeah i saw yes. that on the uh, so laurie will be one. there yeah. 11 to 1. Mm -hmm. so laurie will be there with her art and good and uh give us some little demos maybe but uh, yeah, at the last one, we were like, that is just so cool looking at your mural. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I did have fun with that one. You I know, bet. It, it, well, uh, no weather either. No weather. and yeah. uh, They don't like, know what you go through when you're a mural artist, if you're doing stuff outside in the heat. Well, first of all, you get the heat from the windows uh -huh. and you get the heat from the cement. Oh, so yeah. your feet are burning. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. And your reflect, reflection in your face. And uh huh. And then everything else. So. Well, that that <laughs> one down on the tower offices, I had to. It's 20 feet high and 50 foot long, so yeah. I had to wow. get up on a 10 foot scaffolding to finish the top part of it. And then a storm came up, and uh, I'm thinking, oh well, I can finish this. And then there was a big boom of thunder, and I thought, okay, Lord, I hear you. I'm uh -huh. getting down. The so. biggest one I did was this metal storage unit. That's 40 foot long and nine foot tall. So yeah. You guys are risk takers. <laughs> oh, well, sometimes you have to risk a little bit That's to right. have fun and do what you like to do. To so. do your art. You're yeah, inspired. right. <laughs> yes. Yes. So can you tell us a little bit about um, some of your projects over here? Sure. The, um, the big rug is uh, denim and t-shirt materials. And um, I, I use just about every part of a jeans to make the... Uh, to crochet with the denim or any other material, well, mostly the denim, you cut in an oval shape around like a spiral. So it's like one big long, you're making yarn basically mm -hmm. from the denim. And the same thing with t-shirts. Now with denim, of course, you just cut it very small, like quarter of an inch because it doesn't gib. But with t-shirt material, you got to cut it about an inch because when it stretches, you pull it, yeah. it gets very skinny. Mm -hmm. And then I save the pockets. So I've got couple of purses that are made from the pockets oh, and then okay. the, yeah. and the, the leashes and the dog tuggies those are made from the seams braided together okay and because very, you can't use the seams in the rugs no it is it's too yeah. bulky yeah and then the, this one is a purse made from the top one and the same design that's a chair cushion a chair but you cushion. can make um, chair cushions placemats table runners mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff just from the same design so I'm a big recycler. This <laughs> and is then my major recycling. thing was the Christmas stocking for pets. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But the uh, it's endless ideas that you can mm -hmm. do with denim, and uh, I enjoy doing it because you're recycling and helping the planet, and not mm -hmm. filling yeah. the landfill. 
Okay, and if somebody wanted to find your art, how would they find you? Um, either through the Art Alliance, or if they wanted to get a hold of me to do a mural, they could call Silver Creek Flowers or Gifts and Snowflake. That's so uh, 928-536-2347. Okay. And, uh, and then the, the Art Alliance, of course, is at 251 Penrod Road uh, here in Sholo. Mm -hmm. And you get and, the uh, phone number. <laughs> the phone number there is 532-2296. And so. then if you need me for something, I customize, I paint, I also paint on everything from rocks to saw blades to canvas wow. to <laughs> inside kids' rooms, furniture. I'm canvas? You paint on canvas? canvas. <laughs> well, actually, <laughs> I, I have to train myself now because I've been doing stuff so big for so many years to actually do small stuff. <laughs> yes. And, and you've, you've had um, some of your art in uh, some of the competitions in town. Right. One of my rugs, there's a round rug that you have a picture of that I entered in the um, fiber art contest. And I didn't win a prize, but I did was able to sell it. So All right. Oh, well, there you go. One of the ladies yeah. really liked it. For her, she surprised her mom, and she says, don't tell her I'm buying it for her. <laughs> <laughs> so that was exciting. Yeah. Yes. There were some very talented artists there. Yes. OK. And then you um, just you teach a denim rug yes. class. Yes, at this Rock and M Ranch store in Snowflake. It's across from the Cedar Motel, and I don't have the number right now. But uh, it's a new business. They just opened in mm -hmm. May, and they sell farm fresh eggs and goat milk and uh, bead, beaded work. Both the ladies do beaded work, and they have several classes there. They have beading class, rug making class, soap making class, and my denim rug class. Okay. My classes are Mondays and Thursdays, mm -hmm. 10 to 12 on Mondays, Thursdays, 1 to 3. Okay. And I, that's where I did my last mural, was inside their store. Oh, okay. And you'll see a picture of that, too, whenever they... Okay. Show you the All righty. CD. <laughs> so you are a very busy woman. I think so. Uh, yeah. yeah, I do many other stuff too, but yeah, <laughs> not to yep. do with art. <laughs> In addition okay. to all that. Yes. Wow. Yes. Multitasker for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Well, you girls can do that. Us guys have to focus on one thing at a time. <laughs> oh you come know, on. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so do okay. you uh, cover your murals with anything to um, protect them or anything? Oh. While I'm while I'm working on them, or after you're all done? No, no. Okay. Um, I'm painting them with exterior household latex, and uh, okay. if your house doesn't lose its paint, neither will the murals. Okay, okay. there you go. Hey. Okay. All right. Thank you, Lori. It's good to have you here, nice and to meet uh, you. what a treat nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Thank you. And we'll be back in a few minutes, folks. Welcome back, folks. We're happy to have Lee Hill with us right now. Lee, welcome. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Lee is a gourd artist, and I'll tell you what, it's amazing what she's <laughs> got here. I just, uh, I didn't know there were all different sizes and shapes of gourds. I guess this gourd uh, <laughs> <laughs> didn't, didn't know about that. So yeah. we're going to learn a little bit about it today. But your gourd art is one thing, but but you've got to be an artist to begin with to be able to do this stuff. What got you interested in uh, that? Well, I've loved doing things, creative things, from the time I was a little kid and made my own paper doll clothes. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, and followed it through. Then I was a banker for my whole career. <laughs> oh, my. So, But I took early retirement and did other things. And I moved to Arizona six years ago. And it's the first time I actually put my hands on a gourd. Uh -huh. And I thought all of these other things that I've learned, I can apply on this. There's just an organic feeling to it, and it's yeah. it's fun. And then I've learned the history of gourds, and that's a fascinating history. So uh, I love it. Taking lots of classes to learn techniques, yeah. and then then you can let your creativity come in. Uh -huh. <laughs> Do you grow your own? No. Uh, it's a gourd's a cousin to a pumpkin. Uh -huh. And if you think of a pumpkin field, how much space they take. Mm -hmm. So there's a great gourd farm in Casa Grande, oh. and I get some there, and I order a lot from California. The California ones are usually a thicker gourd, so you can do heavier carving on them. I see. Okay. Well, there's all different sizes and <laughs> shapes, and I look at this little baby, folks. 
Look at that tiny <laughs> little thing. That's a gourd. That's a gourd on the bottom, and the top is, is woven, and it's woven with Irish wax linen. And I just did this uh, a month ago. I went to uh, the East Coast on vacation, and I did it on the plane. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> so uh, by the time the four and a half hour flight was over, 10 rows ahead, 10 rows behind, knew what a gourd was and everything else. <laughs> oh, <laughs> a little gourd workshop mm -hmm. going on That's there right, on the plane. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Very good. So all that, uh, the weaving and so forth that you did, that takes some time, I'm sure. It, it takes time and it, it takes vision. And that, that's a challenge to me at times. Sometimes your eyes just shut down and you have to quit because of that. I can imagine. You simply mm -hmm. can't see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and, and this, you I'm, know, I look at this and I, I can't imagine that being a gourd because I think of gourds as being round, I guess, like, like this gourd up here. Uh -huh. But uh, anyway. This is a single gourd? No, this is actually two. This two, is one gourd here and, and the, the head is a separate one. gourd. Uh -huh. Okay. And uh, this is all uh, on any of my gourds. If there's a line in it, I've wood burned it into it. You can feel it if you feel the texture. So uh, this is the my banker detail stuff still comes out in me that I have to have everything. <laughs> I could just paint it, but that's that's not what I do. So I you got a whole be lot precise. more. Ink. I have to be precise. Mm -hmm. So that's all uh, carved in there or wood burned in, and then these are ink dyes that are there. Mm -hmm. And I like the ink dyes because it shows the natural pattern of the gourds. I through see. It. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yeah. And that's caused from mold on, on yes. the gourd as it grows. Yes. But that was fun. Uh, and, and what do you call him? This is one of my village people. A village people. Uh, I uh, like him. Well, people have come into shows that I've done and said, oh, you do kachinas. And I said no, because uh, as we were saying earlier, uh, they're Hopi, they're religious, and mm -hmm. I wouldn't presume to, to, yeah. to do that. But I like the idea of little people. So uh, mm -hmm. they're all different, and they have no significance other yeah. than that they're now fun. That they're they're fun. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful. And it looks like you've got it on a piece of uh, uh, native pottery here. It may, uh, no, if it is, that's purely by accident. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it is some kind of stone, uh, Yeah. Uh, a piece of polished stone. But, I see, uh, okay. But I couldn't tell you what, what, what that is. I get some ancient pieces coming up out of the ground when the frost comes up in, oh. the, fall, in the spring, uh -huh. and uh, we'll get some little little pieces Shards. of uh, uh, pottery coming up. And, well, I've uh, taken pieces of gourd ah. and done them to look like that Have and you? then framed them that uh -huh. way. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Very nice. Thank you. Now, there's this one behind you, <laughs> well, these two or three behind you, that, um, that closest one. This one? That, yeah. Okay, this is, can I pick it up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll show it to you. Oh, it's got a handle on it. Uh, yeah, it's still got the handle. <laughs> yeah. And the front of this is uh, Danish cord. I see. And it's it's woven, so every one of these is a separate stitch going around it. But this part I can do and watch television while I'm doing. So, oh, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. That's pretty nice. Yeah. And the back of it, I call this lonesome, so it's a coyote. And he's wood burned in there and then painted. And he's howling at the moon. Yeah. <laughs> And that's all in ink dyes also, because there were just some nice markings on this gourd. That's my signature. It's a kachina. Oh, okay. <laughs> or yeah, not a kachina. It's, it's a, a, a lizard. A, a, a gecko. A, a gecko. gecko. Okay. Yeah. A gecko. Yes. But uh, he sits kind of cattywampus, because from the back, you want the coyote mm -hmm. to be straight. And I thought yeah. that was more interesting than just... Yes. A, and that yes. farthest over big one, now that's a gourd down on the, the bottom? The bottom that's of it a is huge a, gourd. It is. Uh, the bottom is a gourd, and that's the latest thing I've been doing, is doing the weaving on the gourd. I see. Uh -huh. And so it's woven with reed, and then uh, there's a leather embellishment on it, and then I take, I use beads and yarn and all kinds of different things to wow. make a textural effect on them. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, I've had fun with them, and I've been very successful with them. So Good. this is uh, this is more fun than banking in the RV. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine it is. Yeah, you know, there's one thing that you said in your bio that uh, really, really uh, jumped out to me. But uh, the shapes of these 
different pieces, these different gourds, tell you what they want to be. Sometimes it takes a long time uh -huh. for it to tell you that. Yeah. But, uh, well, something like this yeah. is, it wants to be uh, a person mm -hmm. of some sort or a character like that. And it's that. going to be a vertical piece. It's going to be a vertical yeah. piece. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this is called a canteen gourd. I see. And it's obvious. Uh, I mean, like the shape a of it. And yeah. they were actually used. I mean, oh, gourds were, were, were old tools. They came before Tupperware or pots and pans. Mm -hmm. People cooked them and carried things in with them. And these actually were used as canteens. They would open that? them up. They were used to carry powder and everything else. Mm -hmm. But I found a source for these stands because usually a canteen gourd is sitting flat on a table. And uh, I found these stands which meant I could do something so it could sit this yes. way. Mm. And so some people wanted things that were more contemporary. Uh-huh. Then purely southwestern. So. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And I'm seeing where you do contemporary, abstract, steampunk. Mm-hmm. Somebody's going to have to tell me what that means. Oh, I'm so glad a, you asked. There's steampunk. a show on, um, <laughs> on um, the, one, of the cha one of the channels it's called Steampunk. It's it's weird to be honest. Okay, uh, but it's it's very popular right now. I have a granddaughter who's 15, and she thinks steampunk is great. But if you saw uh, the Olympic opening ceremony in London a few years ago when they had the Olympics there, they had this crazy thing, and people are in uh, top hats and uh, all this corsets and crazy looking clothes and high boots and. Uh, pieces of watches hanging all over them. It's mm. just crazy looking, but it's extremely popular hmm. right now. Okay. And that steampunk, there's a whole line of clothing for it. Wow. Mm -hmm. So my steampunk uh, gourd that I did is uh, one that I turned upside down because it looked like a head. I tried to decide what to do. And I bought an old camera and uh, took it all apart. And so one of its eyes is a lens and it's got crazy things sticking out. It's, it's, <laughs> It's kind of goofy. It's not my style, but it was uh -huh. okay. Let me try mm -hmm. different things that other people like. And I yeah. Did your granddaughter like it? She loved it. Oh, right. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> There's your, your authority. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, um, having seen your work, where can folks find you? Well, I'm at the, I, as a matter of fact, I'm the featured artist next month at the High Country Art Gallery. All right. And uh, I do shows in the valley. Okay. And uh, I live in the valley. I'm here for the summer. Oh, But we're right. seriously Good. contemplating moving up here full time because it's just so nice. <laughs> <laughs> we think it is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we're both full timers. Are you? Yeah. Yes. yeah. I mean, we, we've really been talking about it this week. Yeah. Uh, but I do shows in the valley. There's a huge gourd festival down there every mm -hmm. year. I and uh, I am a member of the Art Alliance, but I've had issues this summer, so I haven't really had a chance to uh, mm -hmm. do much there yet, sure. but yes. I hope to. Yes, good. Yeah. We'll look for you. Oh, good. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you, Lee. This has thank been you. great. We've we've learned something, and we've uh -huh. seen a lot of beautiful <laughs> stuff, folks. And uh, and thinking of that, uh, this is our last edition of Art Space, and um, we've been doing it now for over six years. I'm not sure of the exact time, but um, I would like to say thanks to all of my co-hosts <laughs> and all of, of the artists that we've uh, met and interviewed. I'm guessing there must be 120 or more that we wow. have, have talked to over these six years. And uh, now you can still find us on the web at, City, at um, Sholo TV. So uh, those of you that are able to do that can still find the archives of all the past shows. Yes, and it's on YouTube also. All right. Yes. Good to know. So yes. anyway, we thank you very much, mm -hmm. folks. It's been a wonderful six years, and uh, we're not going away. We're no, still we going to be not. here, <laughs> and yes. so are the artists. So please continue yeah, right. to support yeah. High Country Art Association and the Arts Alliance of the White Mountains, folks. They're here because they love this area.